What's up, YouTube? We're going to start our divisional breakdown where you're getting all the juicy tidbits about every single team. This episode, we're focusing on the AFC East, the Jets, the Patriots, and company, maybe the new Miami Dolphins. Check it out. Hi, this is Rick Horn out at Naval Air Station, North Island, commissioner of the No Punt Intended Fantasy Football League, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Beep, 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 beep. I feel like, I feel like our introduction, he was, he's really wanting to be like, our intro guy. Yeah. He was really punching it. You know what I mean? He was stepping on the pedal. I liked I liked most of it. The, the part that was weird uh, was him. he actually was doing 360s while talking. Because that's why the sound went yeah. in and out? Yeah. That was pretty nice, though. He that was, was pretty nice. He's also a bit of a scientist, and he wanted to, he wanted everyone to experience the Doppler effect mm -hmm. firsthand. Mm -hmm. what, what is that? The Mike? Doppler effect? Yeah, what is the, the Doppler effect? That's when in you're 60 going, seconds. Uh, Really? Yep. I didn't know that. That's, right. that's I, don't, I don't know if you're right. Oh. I have no idea whether that's correct. Go ahead and check it out. I thought it had <laughs> something to do with weather. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome in. Tuesday, July 9th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Andy, Mike, and Jason back again. You can follow Mike. He has mostly science takes mostly, on Twitter. Mostly. At FF Hitman. Jason is at Jason FFL. I'm at Andy Holloway. The show is at the FF Ballers. And we've got a great show today. We are getting into the divisional previews. If you're just coming back to fantasy football, congratulations. We've got you taken care of. We do. We've been, we've been working all year long. But you, you can come to the table now in July and get all caught up. Yeah, you get to uh, reap the benefits. The fruits of our labor are for you. <laughs> Welcome. Freeloaders. Free <laughs> right. <laughs> But uh, we are in the AFC East on today's show. We have the divisional, the divisional breakdowns. And a couple of things to get into before we jump into the AFC East. First of all, this Thursday. So this is the last show we have until it's showtime, right? Thursday, San Francisco, ballerslive.com. Oh, I see. We, we have a mean. live show at the Independent in San Francisco. We also have a giveaway right now. You can win a signed Patrick Mahomes jersey who very well, Patrick Mahomes might win the Athlete of the Year ESPY. Ooh. And Mike will be there. I will be. That was an excellent professional segue, Andy. That's right. Look, I'm going to be at the ESPYs. I'm not even nominated for Athlete of the Year, much less... Wait, you didn't other. get your nomination? I got nothing. I am. Yeah, I am Jason, I got my nomination. Athlete of the year. I'm up for handsomest talking man of the year. That's not a thing. <laughs> it will be when I show so up. So Mike will actually be at the ESPYs ahead of the show in San Francisco. Yes. So he will be sharing that experience with all of you. Yeah, I'll be live tweeting, live now, On our main account, right? <laughs> so you totally, might need to bro. find, <laughs> find <laughs> follow all of it on, on Instagram. But, yes, the, the signed Pat Mahomes jersey, footclangiveaway.com, and a bunch of ways you can enter to win that. So we want to thank Pristine Auction for their help on that giveaway. Here's your quick question of the day. Who is the most valuable running back handcuff for now, 2019? Do we really have more than one answer for this question? No, we do not. <laughs> At least in my case. I saw Jason's answer. It's the only. It's the only answer. It's really? not the only. Look, yes. I, people will bring up other names for most valuable. Yes, it's the only, only answer, and that is that is Daryl Henderson, rookie running back for the Los Angeles Rams. Because look, we saw what C.J. Anderson was able to do—an old, busted version of C.J. Anderson Thank in you. that scheme, in the you know behind that line in replacement of Todd Gurley. You already have the situation where. Todd Gurley's probably being dialed back. Maybe Malcolm Brown picks up some slack, Daryl Henderson. But you also have the situation of week two, you could have Todd Gurley's knee swell up 
and say, I don't know how we're going to fix this thing. He needs to take six months off. And Daryl Henderson, we traded up for you for a reason. You're in. First of all, he's really good. Yeah. He looked great in college. All three of us were big fans of his film. Has the draft capital, has the offense, the coach. Everything is there except for the fact that the guy in front of him is one of the best running backs in football. So as a hand, as a hand, for <laughs> that Vegas has the odds right now on offensive rookie of the year. They Kyler Murray leads the way. Dwayne Haskins is second. Daryl Henderson is at thirty to one to be offensive player of the year. All right, it is better than Nikhil Harry's odds. It is slightly behind David Montgomery's odds. So as is a Jacobs hand, on that list, um, I don't have Jacobs in front of me. Is David Mopportunity yeah, on did that they list? Spell so his I, name right? Uh, no, they spelled it Montgomery. It's weird. <laughs> Uh, so they haven't updated yet their database. They, but here's the thing. They need a spell that's check. That's pretty good for a guy that's supposed to be a handcuff. Yes. To be beating out Nikhil Harry to be at the same level of a guy in David Montgomery that should start. Right. He should have every opportunity to win that award. <laughs> but that's why Daryl Henderson's being drafted in, what, the seventh, eighth round. Are, that, you, are you taking him where he's being drafted right now? Because I'm sometime, not. Sometimes I do. <laughs> I was going to say that makes it the more difficult question because if the handcuff becomes – it's like the Tevin Coleman, Devonta Freeman right. from years past where Coleman's just like so high that you're like, if I take him, I need to play him, but if I play him, he's not the starter. And Maybe the reason that I'm not drafting him is because I'm also not drafting Todd Gurley. And I feel like the person who is reaching on Daryl Henderson to grab him a little bit earlier is the one saying, I took Gurley. He's worth it You know, at that discounted second-round – price if I lock up you know that backfield and say I'm just taking the Los Angeles Rams backfield I believe in it yeah so, it'll be interesting Mike you have another name you want to bring do, up but I, just to speak to Daryl Henderson I'm doing I'm in the midst of a of a mock draft an industry mock draft and I ended up getting uh, Patrick Mahomes in the fifth round now once again we normally don't draft quarterbacks early but this was this was a chance. Let's see what happens if I'm if I'm drafting against other industry pros who spend all their time on this. It's the fifth round. I mean, I imagine that everyone was everyone in this draft was starting to get a little sweaty about pulling the trigger on Patrick Mahomes, and I was the one to do it. So that left me with a running back hole because I started running back, running back, and then I was filling in the rest. wasn't expecting it to, to expecting to get a quarterback. So I did take Daryl Henderson in that draft because I needed I needed someone with real upside at the running back position at that point. I didn't want I just I didn't want depth per se. I wanted someone who could explode and be a starter. In high stakes leagues right now, Daryl Henderson is going around Alshon Jeffrey, Evan Ingram, Rashad Penny, Robbie Anderson, Dante Pettis, seventieth overall. Is you play to win because if if Daryl Henderson hits. He's a league winner. Yes, exactly. I like him. I yeah. just like him as a player. Yes. If it was someone I didn't believe in, it would make it – I'd be less comfortable. Now, he could be a trap because Malcolm Brown could have way more work than we want. Sure. Because that's what happens in the NFL. Trust goes a long way when it comes to right. starting a which, player. Which is a big reason why we usually say, as far as our handcuff philosophy, is to not draft handcuffs. Handcuffs are very valuable – Later in the year, guys that you pick up off of waivers, but in the draft, you're you're going to end up going into week one unless that guy happened to get injured that week, and you're just the luckiest drafter ever. You're going into week one where you're going to need to make some drops, and you you know especially for a guy you drafted <laughs> yeah, early, you can't drop him. You can't drop him. You spent too much capital on him, and so yeah, usually I don't like drafting handcuffs unless they have standalone value. Like I believe Latavius Murray can be a flex type player who will get a bump up if Kamara were to go down. You would think Henderson has standalone value of some kind on the NFL's best he offense. He should. If he you could. doubt Gurley, someone has to have standalone value behind Gurley. What's crazy is if we hadn't seen the C.J. Anderson, like you referenced it as a point of like, hey, man, somebody can do something in this offense that's not named Todd Gurley. But if Malcolm Brown had been healthy, maybe we would be clued in as to whether Brown would actually be the handcuff. Right. right. All right. Check out the Ultimate Draft Kit right now, ultimatedraftkit.com. 
One dollar of every UDK sold goes directly to our partners, our friends at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. They've been an incredible partner with us this year on the live tour. They've been present at all the events. Um, they do incredible work, obviously, for children and families. And one dollar of every UDK sold goes directly to St. Jude throughout the off season at ultimatedraftkit.com. We're not going to do a whole news segment. I want to get into the divisions. I will bring up two quick pieces of news. Uh, number one, Delaney Walker does not know if he will open the camp, uh, open camp up on the active PUP list. Camp is coming quickly. Yes. So watch out for that if you're looking at some of that. You know, we've talked about Delaney Walker and Greg Olson, late round kind of Tyler Eifert, ignored tight ends. If he starts on the pup, I'm not. I'm. I'm less excited than I even was. Well, you're saying if he starts the season on the pup, obviously you're less excited. But I mean, I. I don't think people. I had not been under the mindset that he would be ready to go fully healed by the start of training camp. So I, I would have. It would help. Well, sure. It would help. I, I would have liked it better if he'd never hurt that darn ankle. Yeah, Ravens tied in Mark Andrews. Woo! Some. Uh, let me it's see. It's coming through. Can I? Can I hit it? Uh, some hype could be a featured receiving target, according to the team's website. I hate that I hate <laughs> the hype because I was such a Mark Andrews fan. I drafted him. I like him. I really He's believe in him. our ultimate draft kit. He has been for months as a just a, a sleeper tight end monster. Early in the off season, he was one of the guys I I brought some attention to. Like, hey, look, I believe on our explain yourself episode, yep. it was I, I was very highly ranked on him and I hate hating it because when I hear that news the only reason I'm you not hate happy it. yeah I'm upset because I stupidly traded Andy this is this is why you know that we care about fantasy football right like because I actually care about winning our leagues and I so much I'm so upset that you have Mark Andrews and that you gave me uh, you got him for John Ross <laughs> <What an idiot. laughs> I did, and I feel, ironically, I feel almost exactly the opposite as you do when I hear this news. I wonder why. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. Play on a fantasy sports platform that does not suck. Check out Sleeper, Modern Design, Infinite Customizations, support for Redraft, Dynasty, and Keeper Leagues. As always, we thank Sleeper for sponsoring our news segment. Guys, let's do it. Let's get divisional. Let me hear your body talk. <laughs> That's my favorite drop. You That's your favorite, Brooks? Yep. First one I ever heard. Well, you get to hear it, what, like eight eight straight times? Yeah. Oh, With the divisional yeah. breakdowns? Mike, you don't want to hear my body talk. <laughs> <laughs> so watch your words. Literally, we never ask that of Jason. But he doesn't. I still. We, we ask him not to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Please don't let your body talk. <laughs> but you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it does. <laughs> AFC East breakdown time. Last year, the Patriots finally won the division, guys. We did it. Underdog. <laughs> well, it is a really difficult division. 11 I and mean, 5. It's just, it's such good competition here. You, you got the Patriots. Oh, man, twice a year, they got to go up against those Dolphins, Jets, and Bills. It's the like, rest of the division was sub 500. Come on, Miami. NFL. Miami was 7 and 9. Buffalo, 6 and 10. The Jets four and twelve. Obviously, the Jets they look up at the Dolphins at seven and nine. They say, "Hey, we want your head coach." Right, and they got him. He, he must be pretty good. You guys so seven, seven and, nine. and seven and nine's in the cards for the Jets this year. But let's um, let's walk through this division. The Patriots dominated it once again. Uh, as I said, eleven and five. We'll take a look at what's happened this off season. When we look at these teams, we'll look at who they've gained, who they've lost. We'll look at how they ranked on offense, and then we'll look a little bit at um, their schedule, how the season's going to start, some of the different highlights and question marks around these teams. We'll get you caught up on them. The Patriots, you know Tom Brady is there. This offseason, is there an underrated addition for this team in your mind? They added Demarius Thomas, Dontrell Inman, Ben Watson at tight end with uh, Rob Gronkowski retiring. I've been a big Dontrell Inman fan. I thought he made a big impact in Indianapolis last year on the field. Not I think fantasy. he's the underrated addition to this team. Hmm. I feel like Dontrell Inman could very well start with a higher snap count than Nikhil Harry if things go that way in camp. 
He, he could, but I, it's not going to be long. He could also get cut before the season. Yeah, he, that could also. That's also well, it, hap- it happens a lot with, with the New England Patriots because they also – look, Demarius Thomas, I don't know how many of us expect him to remain on their team. I'm not one yeah, of them. Not really. And, and, and Josh Gordon is the – the X factor. If Josh, so talk Gordon, about that situation for those that have been disconnected sure, so, from. So Josh Gordon, actually, I'm trying to remember. Is he? He's not officially suspended. Is he, he's on the commissioner's list? Is that correct? Yeah. There. So he is at a place right now where he can't play. He can't participate in football activities. He was suspended again a while back, and now the the situation is there's belief that he could be back this season, but it's it's really out of their hands. So when you're talking about the Patriots, you can only focus on the known commodities is I don't That's think right. it's, I don't think it's worth a worthwhile endeavor to really go after uh, the whoever this last option is is it Inman is it Gordon is it Demarius Thomas I think you got to focus I haven't even on mentioned Dorsett who sure. was, has been on the team for a while now and they brought him back I well mean, he was you assume he's going to make the roster because he knows that they yes, keep bringing him back he, he will make the roster. but we've seen what he adds which is enough for them not for fantasy so right. for fantasy I'm saying you've got Julian Edelman I'm not going to go in on drafting the kill here, even though he was my he was my first ranked player before the draft. Great landing spot, but rookie wide receivers take a little while to come into their own. Uh, usually, even veteran wide receivers take a little while to get up to speed on the Patriots' offense. So, uh, you know, I don't see a ton of pieces here. This should be a good offense. It should be a good team. They should be winning. You got Sony Michelle, who should be in positive game scripts to run the ball, to score touchdowns. Second-ranked offensive line in football, according to the huddle. Michelle's going in the back of the fourth round in fantasy drafts. James White is going in the front of the sixth round as of right now. Edelman's a fourth-round pick. We've been very vocal about we're above the consensus oh, all in. on Edelman. I'm all in on Edelman. In a big way. Yes, and, and Sony Michelle is very interesting <laughs> – because he carries a lot of risk to me. His upside is is massive, but there is a lot of risk for him, especially going in the fourth round. But that opening schedule, which we try not to emphasize too much, but six of the here's six of their first eight weeks: uh, Miami, the Jets, Washington, the Giants, the Jets, and Cleveland. I mean, those are well. Cleveland could be a different uh, scenario this year, but. Those are games where Sony Michelle should be featured heavily. Where you he, we're talking, he's up in the eighteen plus carry category, and he's just burning the clock off, getting cheap goal line touchdowns. They don't play a playoff team from last year until Week Nine. Thanks, NFL. So the NFL has rewarded their Super Bowl victory, ridiculous, with a beautiful schedule. Last year, they were the fifth ranked rushing offense. Speaking to Sony Michelle, eighth ranked passing offense. Those are both by yards per game. If you're, you know, if if you want to talk for a moment about Damian Harris and the yes. fact they spent a third round pick on Damian Harris, my argument against that, which I will stand by, is only amplified by that schedule. I don't see road bumps for Sony Michelle's success in this offense for the first eight or nine weeks. I don't think that there is a need or necessity for Damian Harris to fill a major role. I don't think he is proven that he can fill a major role. And Rex Burkhead's still there. James White is still involved. You talk about standalone value, draftable value. It's Sony. It's James White. It's not Damian Harris. I, I agree that James James White has his role carved out. Whoever the first down, uh, you know, back is, whoever the goal line back, that, that's not James White. He's going to possibly be in in a package near the goal line. But so I, I like him as a standalone value. And look, if Sony's healthy, I think Sony will provide a value in the fourth. The questionable player from the Patriots that I am fine taking a shot on is Damian Harris because what we weren't able to see last year, which it seems by the actions of the Patriots is what they wanted. They wanted to have a three-headed backfield. They wanted to have Rex Burkhead involved. They did well when Burkhead was out there. That ate into Sony Michelle's work. And so they went out and instead of saying, hey, Rex, get healthy, they spent a high capital pick on a quality running back who, because Sony Michelle has undergone recently another uh, knee scope, and that that's those are minor; those aren't huge things. It's not going to keep him out from the season or anything like that. But it it has kept him out of the OTAs, where Damian Harris has gone on and impressed. And people have said he's caught onto the system really well. So to me, I think that the fact that they spent the capital and he's impressed in OTAs 
says he will have the Rex Burkhead role that disappeared last year with Rex, Rex Burkhead's injury. I'm I'm willing to completely buy in on that entire narrative with more information. That's where I'm at. Right. I'm willing to I, – I need to wait and see a little bit more for me to be that excited about it, but I get what you're saying. A couple of questions about this offense before we uh, transition away from them. Um, how does the offense change without Rob Gronkowski as a fundamental part of it, both for the targets, uh, where they shift in the offense, and also just to Tom Brady – Look, it's been a while since Brady's carried the load for your fantasy team. But he has been a very startable quarterback, especially on certain weeks for the past couple of years. What does this mean for Brady? What does it mean for the other targets in the offense with Gronk out? I, uh, Not much, really. I mean, I know that Gronk probably played uh, a bigger factor on the field than we can, than we can quantify. The, other than using the numbers and everything, but last year in only 13 games, 72 targets. I mean, that's that's not the the level of of, of influence and production that you expect from Gronk when he's when he was healthy. You it's know, like, it's like Brady had a year to taper off exactly of his Gronk. So I don't I don't <laughs> think it's tremendously different than last year. And, and if Ben Watson, after he comes back from his suspension, ends up around that 70 target mark, that's that's not surprising. And so it's, it's not a huge change. The, the just, one place that I think it has a huge change, and you know, we've said we're all in on Julian Edelman. That's a big reason why. I mean, you you look at the games that Edelman has played in with Gronk, without Gronk, and I go back to 2016 because that was a time where they lost him for a significant chunk. They had a, a team that resembles this current roster. Uh, that was the Legarrette Blunt monster year of Sony's that right. type. Look, Legarrette Blunt was better with Gronk on the field for half the season, worse without him. That's the Sony. Edelman was – he went from 11 points a game with Gronk on the field to 17 points a game when Gronk was gone. So Edelman is the is the beneficiary here. And when it comes to Tom Brady, don't draft him. Uh, look, if you're out there, don't draft Tom Brady. If you're in a two-quarterback league, sure. But he's not the name – I mean, he's the GOAT. He's the greatest quarterback of all time. But for fantasy football purposes, ten, you know, eight out of the last ten weeks – he didn't even finish as a quarterback one, so he hurt you the vast majority of time. He doesn't. They want to run the football, Absolutely. and they want to run it more this year than even last year when they were fifth. Do you pass on drafting, taking a shot on Nikhil Harry due to the kind of rookie, uh, the slow rookie onloading in this offense? Yes. I, I generally don't draft any rookie wide receivers in a redraft league, but – where where it could go right for Nikhil Harry is he is a baby version of Gronk's production where it's he's not heavily heavily targeted but he scores a bunch of touchdowns. So imagine Mike Williams from last year, which when it hits, you're very happy that you started him. But I, I think it's going to be it's going to be rough for Harry to catch up to that offensive system. Yeah, I mean, as of right now, wide receivers that are going behind Nikhil Harry, so they, I mean, you can definitely draft them on average be, behind Nikhil Harry. Marvin Jones, Larry Fitzgerald, Cortland Sutton, uh, th those type of players right. where I would prefer all of them over Nikhil, rookie Nikhil. Last two things real quick with the Patriots. Number one, Ben Watson is their starting tight end. He has suspended to begin the year. Uh, Matt Lacoste should have that role in the interim. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, and then, no, thank you, Zach Sudfeld. Would you rather have Sonny Michelle in the fourth or James White in the sixth in a half point league? Sony, James, James White, tiebreaker, okay. Andy. Uh Sony. I'll go with Sony. Ha ha! Hey, before we move over to the <laughs> next, <laughs> before we move to the next <laughs> Miami Dolphins. The next Miami Dolphins, because, you know, they're a, a brand new team. Yes. It's clearly what I meant to say. I want to thank today's sponsor, Seat Geek, with millions of live event tickets from sports and live music to comedy and more. Seat Geek has the tickets you're looking for all in one place. They make it super easy. You jump on the app. They have all the deals rated on a scale of 1 to 10. Use an interactive map. Look, I'm I'm taking I'm taking the wife to San Francisco. She's coming to the live show with us. And guess what we're doing? We're staying and I said, I'm bringing you to Hamilton. We're, we're biting the bullet. Oh, we're going to yeah. go see Mr. Alexander. Seat Geek was there. Boom, boom. Two clicks. Cut, just real easy. Great deal. I'm, I'm 
very excited f- financially. I got a great deal, and she gets to go see a good show in Alexander. No wonder SeatGeek has over 50,000 five-star reviews. They're all fully guaranteed any purchase you make. you got to use SeatGeek. Right now, you can get 10 bucks off your first SeatGeek purchase. All you need to do is use our promo code. Download the SeatGeek app today. Use the promo code BALLERS. I am for ten dollars so, off your first purchase. I'm so excited to go to Hamilton this week. <laughs> Jay, Jason's <laughs> also Geek. going. That's promo code Ballers for ten dollars off your first purchase. Jason told me today he so he had never like he's super late to and not not everybody loves musicals. Obviously, I really enjoy going to them. They're fun. My wife loves them. We've seen Hamilton before. Listen to the music obsessively. You know, this is going back a year or two. Jason had never been exposed to the music. Now he tells me he doesn't like it when his car rides in mm-hmm. because he just wants – I'm pretty in the long. middle of a story here. I need my more goodness. of my Alexander <laughs> Hamilton. Now you talked about the next Miami Dolphins, and I think that that's apropos because the, the fans are waiting for the next Miami Dolphins. This is Which for, will happen in 2020. Exactly. This is a team that for a lot of people they are in a – they're positioning themselves. Now I will say wisely to – take the reins from an aging Patriots team to position themselves for a franchise quarterback, whether that's Tua or somebody else, and they've brought in... Are you insinuating they're tanking? I am insinuating that that it may go that direction. <laughs> and I think Dolphins fans want that to happen. Now, they've brought in a, a very... I, what I think was two good hires, and Brian Flores and, yeah. and uh, Chad O'Shea, coming from the New England system. And fantasy owners want to know what value am I going to draw from this team in 2019? It doesn't matter what they're doing for NFL purposes. We're talking about fantasy. And off-season addition-wise, they've added two quarterbacks. They've brought in Ryan Fitzpatrick. They've brought in Josh Rosen. They had a great draft from a future perspective. They were very smart, very wise in the draft. I think this was a good off-season for them going to 2020. Did they just hold? Did they say, hold, I want to apply this draft pick next year? Yeah, they said, pass. We'll <laughs> take it next time. What's the interest if I cash this in? Now, they don't have Ryan Tannehill anymore. Those days are over. Frank Gore has departed. Uh, he tra- <laughs> if you're in the – just just a, a, a side of – Brooks is laughing over here. If you're in your ha- – like your final days as an NFL running back, mm-hmm. why go to Buffalo? Apparently, Shady that McCoy good? That's not good on him. the joints. Did you hear that about this? Uh, Shady did? Yeah, Shady was heavily recruiting, allegedly. Was alleged uh, recruiting Frank And Gore, if you follow him on Here, Twitter, he is eternal. He is immortal. Yes. He looks invincible. Yeah, the reason why you go to Buffalo is Buffalo says, we'll have you. And you uh, say, uh, yes, I want to keep playing. I am so but old. But he's no so one closer to Boca Raton here in Miami. Look, they, had, they did add, uh, I don't know if you know this, Jason. They added Mark Walton to this roster. Oh, goodness. He's on the roster. No, he, he Mark Walton will not get a voice mm-hmm. for his nonsense. Yeah. Oh, Clean it up, gosh. Walton. I was waiting for it. Nope, not happening. But here's what's exciting about the Miami Dolphins. If Ryan Fitzpatrick is the quarterback for those games, we don't know how long that will be. It could be half a season. Could it could be three games. It could be three games. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's so funny. Well, I'm, I'm laughing because I'm thinking of this situation. Analogous to a rental car for Ryan Fitzpatrick. Oh, oh you yeah. got it right. You, yes. If you've got a rental car, you don't care what happens. <laughs> yes. You go, you go You're ahead. not protecting that your baby. You pull the Jake brake on the turn, see what happens. <laughs> Just but what we know, if Fitzpatrick is the quarterback, a at least a wide receiver, if not multiple. They will have fantasy value because the way that Ryan Fitzpatrick plays the game of football, which is he also does not care. He will sling the ball into the tightest of pockets and he will make absolute boneheaded NFL throws, but they sometimes work out. So it will be fun to watch. It, yes, it will be incredibly fun to watch. I believe that the analogy continue. he probably rents wherever he's playing quarterback as well. He's not buying in those cities. He's ready to move on to the next opportunity to throw the ball up for grabs. You're not wrong. 
Now, the question is just like, how long does the team want that to happen? Right. I don't know. Um, how many interceptions do they withstand? How many losses? Oh, they're gonna, a lot. They're going to be very happy with right? – that's what I'm talking about, with the tanking. Who, but you got to see what Rosen has. Who else in the NFL can take you from a 14-point uh, margin at halftime? Yes. And you're still like, guys, we can still lose. We can definitely Ryan Fitzpatrick, lose. from the – go back to his time with the Jets – then last year with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I don't, I'm just, I'm super not, excited for Fitzpatrick but fantasy in, magic at the beginning of the year. In redraft, right? Like in, yes. in your draft, you're not drafting Ryan Fitzpatrick assuming no, he's no, named I, the starter because no. you don't think that he has any chance of being the long-term 16-week starter. So, I'm talking about the wide receivers. Well, even still, I mean, if, if, would you take a wide receiver, you know, if you, Devontae Parker, let's say he's got a rapport with <laughs> Fitzpatrick. Are you really going to draft him hoping for some something first of all, to stick long First term? of all, he doesn't. He doesn't have a rapport with Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Whatever you think he might have, he doesn't. I Stills would be the shot for me. Yes. He's a downfield threat who has at least been consistent in contributing in that fashion. Oh, Stills for this Fitzpatrick. Team, this team. It's for a me, DFS it's, week one stack. This, a, this and, was a bad team. Yeah. 32nd in the league in play calls last year. 30th in passing yardage per game, 181 yards per game. Uh, this is going to be a brand new offense. What does it even mean? When you bring in the New England ph philosophy in and Chad O'Shea, what are you expecting to see them a try to Albert implement? Wilson. And, and uh, I'm, I've, I've said it before, but I'm very intrigued by Albert Wilson, assuming he's healthy, fully willing to pivot over to Kenny Stills if Albert Wilson is, is still not ready to go. They're both free, by the way. If you're a fantasy owner, yeah. you want to spend, that, that's a, what's interesting you about spend these, the last pick on If them? I had to spend any kind of actual draft capital on the Miami wide receivers, then no. It, but this is this is found money. This All is right. you're walking into the casino and, well, oh, here's $100 that I just get to throw down and this, see what happens. I could Halloween lose it on my candy. first bet. I'll eat yes. it because I have it for free. I'm not paying for it. Yeah, that makes sense. Now let's talk about the only player of fantasy relevance on this team. Or you can say there's two here, but the right. running back position in fantasy is so scarce that every team's starting running back is an important asset in fantasy leagues. Kenyon Drake has shown for sure. We've seen him when he has the workload to himself. He has been dominant. He's been a top 12 running back. He's always been on this same bad team with a poor offensive line. Um... Which was dead last last year, by the way. Exactly. And and part of the reason why he succeeds here, whereas Frank Gore did not, is because when you compare the players, uh, and, and, you know, I would definitely include uh, uh, Kalen Bellage, you know, f getting chips, found money at the Bellagio. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, Kenyon Drake is one of those guys who sometimes he dance, dances around too much, but he has the ability to have a bad offensive line dance around, make a move, and go for 40 yards. I think Kenyon Drake is a talented back, and with the absence of Frank Gore, I am all about where Kenyon Drake is being drafted at right now. I mean, Drake's in the fifth round as a starting running back. It's interesting. Who gets more volume than he had last year, presumably. That's definitely how I'm projecting it. And uh, he's, he's shown that on a per-touch basis, he's very good. Yeah, he has some things stacked against the ceiling side of Kenyon Drake. By the way, Frank Gore didn't stink last year. 4.6 right. carry in that last-placed offensive line. Um, so, look, I don't know if I project well, they're, volume. They're, What's best case, worst case for last place, Drake? They're last place, the huddle's projecting them for last this year. Okay. Just to clarify okay. that. Uh, what is the best case for Kenyon Drake, Jason? I know you're a huge Kenyon Drake fan. I know you have all his cards. I know that you collect his jerseys. Uh, I think the, the best tattoo is just you bear. You, can you take the bandage off yet or uh, no, I would never do that. Um, I think that you'll Ken keep it bandaged forever. I would if I had a Kenyon Drake <laughs> tattoo. I, oh, I, it's an old war injury. I'm going to let it. Heal. <laughs> Don't worry about this. I think the 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 upside for Kenyon Drake is a top 15 running back in fantasy where you draft him. He'll be great there. I'm projecting him as an RB two right now. I think he's my running back 19. You know, he's being drafted well after that. So I think he's just a valuable uh, second or third back on your roster. Any any possible intrigue for Mike Gasicki, tight end, who is an ab like athletically smashes all records along with Saquon the, the last year at the let Combine? Me ask, let me ask you this. Have you ever seen Ryan Fitzpatrick throw the ball to a tight end? No, I, I get it. but No, no interest. 
Okay. Just, but, like it, are, how much of New England's system are they trying to duplicate? That's New England that's system. Did, New England system didn't work for anybody other than you know Rob Gronkowski really in the last ten years. Everybody that pretended to be him, it didn't really work for them. I'd need to see it first to take any to, to even look his way or speak his name. Okay, Mike Gesicki comes out week one and. And dominates, I would yeah. be very interested because he okay. has the athletic okay, profile, the draft yes. capital. I don't think he will come out week one and dominate. If he does, I'll, I think both Andy and myself, we would change our tune. Kenyon Drake, I have him at 23. Mike has him at 24. Jason at 19. We need to circle back to running back. I think Kalen Balaj is, is because of where he's being drafted, he's being drafted as a handcuff or not drafted. He is the only other name worth considering on this roster. I think he's a, a steal. You might as well take him and see what happens in week one or two. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that Drake has more volume. If he doesn't have more volume, Frank Gore had 175 carries last year in this offense, and Balaz showed well in his limited work. Some big plays. He's not the same type of player, but he would when you're free. When you're talking about a free running back that could be in a committee, you have to look his way. I, and, and as the resident Kenyon or uh, Kalen Balaz denier, I don't think he's very good. I'm all about drafting Kalen Balaj in the 14th round because opportunity matters more than talent. You're talking about a free running back who week one, you it, let's say he comes out, he just happens to be the starter. That's right. a steal. Let's yeah. say he comes out and he is what I thought he is, which is nothing great. I cut him and I make a great waiver pickup week one. He's the type of Mike Gasicki. <laughs> um, <laughs> August 28th, 2017. That, what are you jumping in a time machine? That was here? the date that we did a live show in Toronto. It just happened to pop onto my, I don't know, I, my, my phone in the car. You know how you get in and your Bluetooth connects and it does random stuff on your phone yes. sometimes, like any random song. I'm going song, song, song. Then I get the live show from 2017. This is like this morning, driving in. Mike and Jason's sleepers, or sorry, your, your rising stars, just to tell you how how long this Miami offseason stuff has happened, was Devontae Parker. Yes. When Jay Cutler oh, yes. and Devontae Parker yes. flashed in preseason. I stand by it even though it didn't pay off. <laughs> that's not a thing you should do. <laughs> they had that's a bad decision. Preseason. But it was just so funny because we were talking then about just be careful with the press that Miami gives you. Yeah. They're very generous down there in Miami. One bad story for every 44 good ones. So if Devontae Parker flashes in the preseason, I'm going to be taking the Kenny Stills. I'm going to be taking <laughs> Kenny Stills. <laughs> All right, let's continue our uh, travel through the division. The Buffalo Bills last season, 6-10, and ten, ninth in the NFL in rushing yards per game, 31st in passing yards per game. They have a loaded running back court. LaShawn McCoy, Devin Singletary, Frank Gore, TJ Yeldon. We'll talk about them. They have a loaded wide receiver core. At least in, 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 as far as names. Of B squad players. Right. Yes. Loaded B squad. John Brown, it's, it's Robert like Foster. The JV. Yes. I feel like it's. it's they like, Jones, Cole Beasley. They've got a banana clip on the BB gun. You know what I mean? It's like they've got a lot of ammo here. It's not going to hurt you much, but like, watch out for your eyes. There's a lot to work through here because every time you talk about a running back or a wide receiver in Buffalo, you're tempered by the fact that this is a team that, look, I know they want to run the ball a ton, yeah, but part of that's their quarterback, Josh Allen, last season, monster year for fantasy owners, and you bring in so much. Look, last year you could make the case, okay, Shady's just going to be Shady. He'll be okay. He wasn't. Now you've got a bunch of other options in this offense. The big offseason additions were John Brown and Cole Beasley at wide receiver. Frank Gore and TJ Yeldon at running back. Tyler Croft is there at tight end. He's he's done, though, right? I don't think he's done for the whole season. I thought no. it was a broken ankle. No, I think Let me, he... I'll look it up. I think he's uh, not going to be there for a little while. Expected to miss three or four months when, when it happened. the injury yeah, happened. Yeah. Yeah. So I think he'll be back at some point, not that it matters. So let's start with Josh Allen because he's the most interesting... Fantasy storyline. Talking about Josh Stallion. Oh, oh my gosh. Josh Stallion. Excellent. I feel really. <laughs> like this. I'm in off season form, Brooks. That's wrong. I got to have that ready for you. No, you did have it ready for me. Mm. No, Brooks, you, you don't need to hold his hand. 
The man needs to know about Josh Stallion. He's going to learn some, how to swim on his own. At some point, I need to hand this off to Brooks. That's oh, Brooks I hosting mean, the show? No, not the – stop. Oh. Don't don't be ridiculous. Jason, Jason, we, almost, we almost did it, Jason. Oh, I just, man. <laughs> <Soon. laughs> yeah. All right. No. All right. Here comes Brooks. No, Let's no, see no. how it goes. Let's <laughs> nope. see how it goes. Nope. I just meant the stallion drop. He could have. He should have it on a pedal, Mike. Put him on a guitar pedal oh, with different drops. Nice. You hear his foot stomping over there. Eventually, it hits it. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <Brooks>. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. No problem. Josh Stallion came in, set the NFL on fire, fantasy on fire. Yeah. Uh, we all like him as a potential breakout based on his ADP. He's an 11th round, middle of the 11th round fantasy quarterback. Has anything changed since, you know, in your thinking over the last month or two about Josh Allen? Not not much has changed. I mean, he is a great late round shot because because you know it, it scoring is so wacky. Where quarterbacks that run the ball they get a point for every ten yards versus quarterbacks throwing the ball they get a point for every twenty five yards. The rushing quarterbacks are so safe and they have huge monstrous upsides. We saw that already. The second half of the rookie year, once he came back from injury, he was a quarterback too. So you, you've you already seen Josh Allen in fantasy football be a dominant force. Then they've gone out this offseason. Remember when they had uh, Antonio Brown? Remember, guys, when they traded oh, for yeah. Antonio Brown? Yeah, I and remember. Then, and then that fell through. Then they're like, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll load the BB gun up with everything <laughs> else we can. And so, I mean, he's got weapons he didn't have last year. He's coming into year two. They, you know, I, I think that he is – a very great late round shot to be a, a really, you know, he's got the upside to be a top five di uh, fantasy quarterback just because of how, if you didn't watch him, right? Because the Bills didn't get oh, a lot of airtime. Oh, please air don't watch them. They didn't get a lot of airtime last year. He's Stop. not the most accurate quarterback. He's he's really been poo-pooed a lot on uh, in that way. But as an athlete, as yeah. a runner, I mean – you, he is a dominant NFL player in that regard. He looks like Cam Newton when it comes to he can pull the ball down. He's going to get the outside. He'll plow forward for a couple extra yards. He's a he's a big athletic guy. They're going to run the football. If you wanted to make the case for Josh Allen to develop as a passer, it would have been an easier case to make with a true wide receiver one like an Antonio Brown or somebody of that caliber coming in, a physical specimen, right? These are not – look, Zay Jones is his best red zone target. That's the end of that sentence. John Brown, yes, he can run down the field. Robert Foster is a burner. No, as, as a physical red zone talent, Cole Beasley is a micro machine. Yes. He is not going to be the player that – Cole Beasley – Cole Beasley doesn't save you from yourself the way Brandon Marshall would save Jay Cutler from himself is my okay, only point. As from an errant ball? Correct. Gotcha. Or like, uh, who was it for Cam for two years in uh, what, in Carolina? Not before Funches. I'm Benjamin. Smith? Benjamin. Uh, Calvin oh, Benjamin. Calvin yes, Benjamin was yes. a monster of a man. It didn't matter. If the Bills they, had him, and the, they, they said no. The catch radius is my point. So I don't know how much I would project Allen to develop as a passer. Just count on him to run the football. If you're making, let's say you're placing bets now on where you want to be with LaShawn McCoy or Zevin Singletary or Gore or John Brown or Cole Beasley, where are you? Where are you drafting Bills or are you not? I'm I'm pretty much not drafting Bills. I, I like Devin Singletary. I think he's a talented back, but he is clearly behind LaShawn McCoy unless they release him surprisingly or get something for him. Assuming that they go into the season with Shady as a starter. I'm not on Shady. I don't believe that he's going to get better with age. He's had a lot of wear and tear <laughs> on his tires. I don't believe he will he either. wasn't good last year. And it's a clogged backfield. Because it's a clogged backfield and it's a clogged wide receiving core, the only player that I really want on this team is Josh Allen. He's cheap. He, you know, he checks all the boxes for fantasy quarterback play other than, you know, if you're in one of those leagues, maybe a, a minus four per interception right. type league, stay away. I will still take – the shot for Shady McCoy, but just because his ADP is so interesting. Brooks, this is current. Yes, sir. Nine eleven for a projected starting running back who can catch the ball. If if you were talking about McCoy was still up in that five six range, then no, I I have no interest. But almost a tenth round pick for a starting running back. What other running backs am I taking there? Right versus McCoy, and I'm I'm not saying that right for no. or against you. I'm curious. Okay, here's the guys going. 
uh, right ahead of him. Because I want to test this and see what I would do. So just ahead of him, the quarter, the running backs would be Jordan Howard, Latavius Murray, Daryl Henderson. Just after Shady would be Royce Freeman, Kareem Hunt, Jarek McKinnon. I will not Ronald. have LaShawn McCoy on a roster this year. I'm going to say something super. Which un- running backs that I that I read were you like? Yeah, I'm taking those all six. Okay, over Kareem McCoy. Hunt. All, all over. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, not Kareem Hunt. Okay, because I'm not drafting Kareem Hunt. The other five I will take over Shady, and I'm going to say something super unhelpful. This because that's Sweet. that's good for the show. I think this backfield will have a very very viable fantasy running back from week nine on. Ooh. I think it's Devin Singletary. Then, then it's Singletary. I think sure. it's Devin Singletary. This is a team that wants to run the football. They're fifth in the league in rushing yardage. It's not just Josh Allen. They want to run the ball. But can they? And is it one guy? I think you'll find out by the halfway through the year. So I'm, I'm afraid to draft Shady is my point. I, I get it. But a 10th round price is not very scary. You'll know. I mean, maybe you rent him for a few weeks at least. The Jets. The New York Jets. 4-12 and 12 last season. Adam Gaze, new head coach, replaces Todd Bowles. Here we go again with Adam Gaze. Starts the season against Buffalo, Cleveland, New England, and then an early bye week this year. Everyone wants to know about the offseason addition of Le'Veon Bell, how he's going to produce for fantasy owners, and what I want to know more than anything, and if anybody has a crystal ball, wants to clue me in, Will Sam Darnold take the next step, and will he do it quickly under Adam Gaze, who you guys aren't big fans, but he has been heralded as someone that gets the maximum out of what he has. I did I see think him do got, that once. I saw him do it with Ryan Tannehill. He got the best of Ryan Tannehill. Okay. Fantasy had – Ryan Tannehill was relevant at times in fantasy. He got the best out of Tannehill for what Tannehill is. Darnold's ceiling is higher than Tannehill to me. So are you familiar with uh, with the Paula Abdul? <laughs> That's the, I love I, any sentence that starts that way. I've just, heard just of who she is. the Paula Abdul. No, is the, the Paul, it's the Paula Abdul paradox when it comes to quarterbacks. Oh, dear. You asked about him taking steps. It's two steps forward, two steps back. That's not – you. you're in the same spot. Exactly. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, like, he'll – He'll take a step forward because you you at least saw some progression. You saw the flash over the the last few weeks of the season once he returned from his injury, and, and I, Josh McCown really helped Sam Darnold, I believe, in, in mentoring him up, him able to him able to sit and watch and learn from the sideline. I think was very beneficial for him. Plus, they, he has Robbie Anderson and he has Le'Veon Bell. So I, I think that Sam Darnold does take the next step. I don't think that translates into huge huge fantasy numbers, but maybe how the Jets times are a 5-6 think- win team now. How many times do you think you could stream Sam Darnold? I think you can stream Sam Darnold uh, you know, probably five or six times this season. He, he He's a good quarterback. I think the future is bright. He's clearly going to take a step forward you know forward from his rookie season and he so does that flashed, push him yeah. yeah he yeah. had the games where it was like you saw what you needed to see so you know does he become a top 15 quarterback next year I don't think so can he become a top 25 quarterback absolutely he can get himself away from the conversation of the last place fantasy quarterbacks which is you know where he lived as a rookie now where that goes you know you, you brought up Lev Bell Robbie Anderson he's got Quincy and Nunwa. Um, and I really like Chris Herndon longer term, but he will likely be suspended for the first two games at Jets tight end. Right. The, it's not official yet, but it kind of it's leaked. Gonna, it's going to happen. It leaked that they expect a two-game suspension, but it's not technically official yeah. yet. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it, this is an interesting offense, right? It's a matter of what you believe as as a whole. I think this is one where you have to take a holistic approach. I think Sam Darnold gets better, but I am so afraid – of a timeshare with Le'Veon Bell, with Adam Gaze saying, look, wow, you're, you're afraid of a timeshare? I am afraid of, and, and Wait, don't get me are wrong. Are we transitioning away from Darnold here? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, okay. you got to more Darnold Jets stuff? I, no, I was confused as what you're oh. saying. You no, were, I'm saying the Jets as a about, whole. Okay. So the, a holistic approach to the Jets, I think, that starts with Darn, Darnold, but also includes Adam Gaze. And Adam Gaze, 
has not been predominantly a, a, a workhorse running back guy. Now, he's had, you know, Kenya Drake. He's, he has not had Le'Veon Bell. They paid a lot of money for Love Bell. So is Love Bell going to be the clear leader here? Absolutely, 100%. There's no doubt. But he's not going to get the work to the same degree, the the, sh the market share within the running backs that he got at Pittsburgh, which was basically all of it. I just can't imagine that happening here. I mean, really? Look, I really can. Hmm. I, I mean, do you, do you think he's going to get the same percentage of market share that he got I in Pittsburgh? Yes. Yeah, pretty close. But, oh, it's, man. It's but just he may efficient. struggle yes. with it. I I do not think that happens. I really genuinely don't. Well, then he, that was a complete waste of money. Did he? Well, he receive 100 passing targets in 2019. No. I say no. Okay. Will he receive 90 passing targets in 2019? Because uh, that's where the value for Lev Bell, that's where the immunity against game script Helps right. Lev Bell. This is a four and twelve team. Now I expect him to be a better team, but what if they're not? If they're not, and you have a high volume workload running back, it don't matter if you're not catching the ball. You need the immunity. You need ninety targets. I have him with eighty eight targets right now. Yeah, and the but the immunity so close for him, it, which he's safe. So where is where is he going? One oh nine. So he's going at the back of the first round. Are you guys? taking Le'Veon Bell there or are you pivoting to a wide receiver and just letting someone else take Bell like are you taking the approach of you're okay passing I am 100% okay being wrong on Lev Bell I don't think Le'Veon Bell gets the workload that we're accustomed to him getting and he's going to be less effective with the New York Jets team the, will he still be I mean he's a no no if, if he is if he doesn't get the volume and he is not as efficient how how is he not a bust? Well, I mean, it, so it depends on where what you think. So if he was drafted where David Johnson was drafted last year, he would be a bust, right? David Johnson finished as the running back ten, right? And people felt like he was a bust because he was, you know, at the one hundred one. If he's drafted where he's drafted right now at the one hundred nine, and he finishes as the running back thirteen, will you feel like he's a bust? I mean, I don't think you'll feel like he's a bust, even though he's not an RB right. one. All right, possibly. There are. It's a tough decision for fantasy owners right now because, you know, the guys that I have back-to-back -back in my rankings are Le'Veon Bell and someone like Dalvin Cook. And when you look at the the situation that you face as a fantasy owner picking which guy do I want to be my running back one, well, it's not like Lev Bell in his career history hasn't shown you he can have this huge ceiling, but I don't love this the team that was 26th in rushing offense last year. That was is ranked 27th heading into 2019 as an offensive line, something Lev Bell's never dealt with. A team that was 25th in passing yardage with a younger quarterback. So those things I don't love. Like I, mean, I, I love Minnesota committing to the run. I love what they've done with their O line to improve it. I love Dalvin Cook's market share. And maybe the unknown of, of Dalvin Cook is tempting in that situation. So that's the decision fantasy owners have to make. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm probably flipping a coin between those two <laughs> in my draft. Those are the best decisions. Well, but yeah, look, between those two, the way my the way I want my team to feel, the risk reward, it's going to they're really close is my point. They did add Jamison Crowder to the wide receiving core, that uh, one that already has Robbie Anderson and Quincy and Quincy Anunua. Look, Crowder is the kind of player look, I don't care about him for fantasy. I really don't. I don't think you guys do either. I do not. But he is the kind of player that really helps a quarterback. He's the kind of player that helped, uh, you know, in Washington. Even though his consistency, the expectations, some of the things you hoped from him didn't come to fruition there, he can soak up targets. He can be an escape valve. He can be a drive extender. One of the things that blew me away about this Jets team, if these numbers are right, is that they were sixth in the NFL in total plays run, but finished 25th and 26th in total yards gained at, in rushing and passing. Some first downs would be helpful. Yeah. You know? And I think Jarvis Land uh, not Jarvis Jameson Landy, Crowder. Jamison Crowder could could help with that. The, the signing of Crowder was so bizarre to me when you already have, when you have Quincy Anunwa and you Quincy Anunwa was awesome. It, I don't know if people remember, but the first four weeks, Quincy was was a fantastic wide receiver three option. And then they shifted things around with Jermaine Curse, gave Curse the role that Anunwa was succeeding in, and then Anunwa 
really fell apart there, really only had one decent game the rest of the season. So why are you messing with his mojo with Jamison Crowder when you just gave Anunwa a contract extension? It's very, very bizarre management to me. Yeah, Anunwa is – I'm not excited about Anunwa this season. If I'm taking a shot, it's on Robbie Anderson. It's oh, on, it's, it's that's on not the, a shot. Robbie Anderson's going to be awesome. It's on the ceiling. It's on the big plays. Anunwa is talented, but, I again, I think he's better for Sam Donald than he is for fantasy owners because he's going to have a good game and a bad game. Yeah, he's probably like Muhammad Sanu. He helps Matt Ryan, but right. you never want to play sure. him. So let's talk about Robbie Anderson then. Well, because, why don't you, Mike? Because that's you actually eager. fun. You sit, you're sitting up straight now? Never. I'm always always improperly sitting. Wide receiver four over the final four games of last year, and that was that had a lot to do with not just Robbie Anderson, but Sam Darnold. When he came back, he just – the game was a little bit different for him, and, and Anderson turned into an absolute league winner if you picked him up at the right time to play him through the playoffs. He is he is a, a he has the skills to be an elite wide receiver. He has the frame, he has the athletic ability. If his quarterback decides to feed him and feature him like a wide receiver one, then I believe that Robbie Anderson is easily a top 20 wide receiver when when the the year ends jay are you with me on robbie anderson are you as bullish or are you still tempering i'm, I'm still a little tempered i think he's an exceptionally talented player we've seen him succeed for both fantasy and real life he can get downfield people can't cover him right like when he right. goes long he's going to win and if they open it up he should succeed he reminds me a lot of uh, you know like a marvin jones type of player where if you're if the touchdowns come, you're going to be super happy with Robbie Anderson, but if they don't come and I'm not, you know, I'm, I look, I do think Sam Darnold, Sam Darnold, take a, a step forward this year, but I'm not bullish on the Jets this season. I think they need another season before I'm like all in on where they're where they're valued at. I, I've learned that about myself today. It wasn't just the touchdowns for the end of the year, like last year, over the over the final five games. That's when Robbie Anderson was averaging nine targets, over nine targets a game. Yeah, and you brought up Herndon, Anunwa, Crowder, Lev Bell. Those will be other players that soak up targets from Sam Darnold. Robbie Anderson or Alshon Jeffrey, Mike? Robbie Anderson. Jason? Alshon. Robbie Anderson or DJ Moore of the Carolina Panthers? DJ Moore. Robbie Anderson. Robbie Anderson or Dante Pettis? Dante Pettis. Robbie Anderson. Okay, those are all players going right around that vicinity just ahead of Robbie Anderson. This one might sway you, but Tyler Boyd or Robbie Anderson? Boyd. Boyd. Okay. All right, Allen Robinson or Robbie Anderson? Two names that sound strange together. <laughs> that one I would take Robbie. Robbie. Okay, all right. Well, that is it for today's episode, the AFC East preview. Who, who wins the division, guys? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be tough sledding for the Patriots. Uh, it really is. You know, we all know it's the beginning of the end, but with the unbelievably difficult competition, I think they raise their game up, and I think I'm gonna give it to the Patriots. Well, you have incredible foresight. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm our, usually about three years out. Our our show in San Francisco will have some interesting predictions to be made. So I hope that you can bust out that foresight. And give us some some very special tips and tricks. Jason's got five sight. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the Patriots, right? Who fa do you want to put this? How, do the Patriots win twelve games? I don't think so. I agree. Ooh. I think they went eleven. Okay. I think they went eleven. 11. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Twelve is outlandish, Mike. Sorry to cut you off there, Jason. No, that's all right. Sometimes the pristine deal of the day it it forces its way in. It's too good. It's too good. All right. Keenan Allen signed Los Angeles Chargers jersey yesterday on pristineauction.com. $49.90. It didn't even have the decency to go up to $50. No, this is two for 100. Two, two, two for 100, two for 100 deal. deal. Yeah. Two for 100 here. <laughs> Keenan Allen. Yes. Uh, hundreds of daily auctions. We always bring you on pristine deal of the day, but there are hundreds. Your favorite team, your favorite players. 
You can check them all out at pristineauction.com and use that registration code BALLERS. BALLERS. You get five bucks off your first purchase. I think that's it. I think we're done. I think it's over. What's on the next show, Andy? NFC East, right, Brooks? Oh, yeah. We're staying in the East. Yeah. Thanks for listening, supporting the show. We'll catch you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.